it's Don Skaggs again with Empowered Inventing, the one place where we try to help you help other people by taking your great idea, the right opportunity, mixing those things with sound wisdom so you can turn them into real things like products and businesses that make money. Now, today I want you to think of, uh, of to think about cardboard boxes. Again, another strange question I know, but uh, you know, you usually don't think of cardboard boxes when you're thinking about those little um, uh, drink holders, hot coffee cup holders that they have. This one I think comes from yep, comes from Starbucks. Uh, but there's uh, there's this is made from really cardboard or corrugated uh, board. And if you look, and I'm going to I'm going to hold this up here real close so you can see it. But you see the little corrugations in there, that fluted, um, uh, kind of harder cardboard type paper? Well, you know, that's what's inside of cardboard boxes. So they have used cardboard boxes uh, for these drink holders, which is kind of neat because they kind of help insulate, you know, kind of the idea behind it. You know, you got a little, little extra space in there, letting air flow through. Uh, so uh, kind of a neat idea and uh, I want you to remember this because I want to I'm going to circle back to it because what I want to talk to you about is a, a little bit of a history lesson but then also a lesson of what we can take from it as inventors and entrepreneurs. Now uh, if you think about cardboard boxes you usually don't think about invention but cardboard has a unique history the history of the cardboard box um, so originally cardboard was used in China at like three to four thousand years ago and probably not the same cardboard we think of today certainly not what we call corrugated board corrugated cardboard uh, but it was uh, sheets of treated mulberry tree bark that was used to wrap and preserve food in the Han Dynasty about two three hundred BC so that's kind of where the first instance is of that, but um, uh, the, the real next first intra, uh, instance of using cardboard, per se, was in actually in 1817 in Europe uh, by a German manufacturer of board games. And, you know, who knew they even had board games back in, you know, 1817? But uh, um, there was a, a German board game, and they, uh, they actually used cardboard then. Uh, so fast forward 40 years later, it's 1856. Uh, Edward Allen and Edward Healy, I'm going to call them the two Edwards, the two Eds for, for the sake of the story, um, uh, had a business where they sold these tall hats. You know, the, the you'll see them in old pictures from, from that uh, period, uh, the what they call the stove uh, stovepipe hats, those tall black hats that men used to wear uh, back then. Um, so they had a store where they sold those because apparently that was all the rage. And they needed a liner to keep the shape of that hat that also added insulation. So they invented corrugated or pleated paper and patented it in England that same year. So they were inventors. But did they invent the cardboard box? No. Fast forward again, 1871, Albert Jones, a guy in New York, um, uh, was awarded a U.S. patent for improvement in paper for packing, for securely packing vials and bottles. But he just limited it to that. Um, uh, it was also, uh, you know, to pack a lot of other things as well. Uh, so he came up with basically the cardboard box. What kind of what we know today is the cardboard box. So kind of neat, uh, kind of a neat uh, uh, thing. You know, we don't think of cardboard as we do. This is like a ubiquitous thing. You go down to Staples and you get this stuff. You go buy it from Uline and, you know, places like that. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we don't think of card, we think of packaging things in card. We don't think of this as an invention or actually product in itself. Now, people in the cardboard industry, hey, this is their product. Um, but, so, the two ads had actually filed a patent, and they were able to make this, but they weren't able to make it in large quantities. But they, they, they were able to make it somewhat uh, to securely package, you know, vials, bottles, things that were breaking that were being shipped, uh, same way they do things today. 
Uh, so let's fast forward a little more just before the um, 20th century, 1896, late 19th century. Um, so, um, or I'm sorry, 1879. Uh, so there's a paper bag manufacturer named Robert Gare. And um, he actually has an accident making these paper bags. He wasn't doing boxes. So um, he was actually had an accident where some kind of cutting tool, some kind of cutting um, a piece of machinery didn't do exactly what they were wanting to do. And it was like, oh, no, we've ruined all these bags. And they stopped it. But he stopped and he looked at that. And he, he noticed that this press accident caused a crease in a cut that actually led him to inventing foldable cardboard boxes that he could create at 750 per hour, which was like blazingly fast, which was probably what was really holding him back from mass producing these things. So uh, 1896, now we're getting just before the 20th century, Gear got a his big break in selling these though. So you think of 1879, 1896, quite a few years of uh, making and selling something. But he got the huge break from a, uh, a company that made crackers and cookies called Nabisco. And they needed a way to package their crackers to keep them, uh, um, you know, fresh and, and not broken. And uh, just a little side note, before they were um, putting uh, crackers in cardboard boxes, uh, can any of you guess what they were using? They were putting them in barrels. Crackers and barrels. I know just, that sounds weird today, doesn't it? But actually, it's where we get the word cracker barrel. If you ever wonder, wonder where the word cracker barrel came from, that's how they used to package crackers before uh, Robert Gare sold, had uh, his big sale of cardboard boxes to Nabisco for packaging crackers. So, what can we learn from all this? Well, for number one, the ads uh, really didn't care about packaging. They were making hats. All they cared about was hats and, and making those hats, which is kind of my full circle thing about the, uh, the Starbucks coffee uh, cup holder. Um, you know, we went from hats, stovepipe hats, to cardboard boxes, and now we're back to almost the stovepipe hat because, again, this was probably kind of what they did with the... Um, with the, with the hats, you know, they were lining them with this corrugated paper. Well, now we've taken that sort of that same design. We're insulating coffee cups with them in the 21st century, which I just think is is cool. So, what can we learn about all this? Well, outside of that, which is I, again, I thought this was just an interesting piece of that. Um, they didn't care about hats. The uh, the, the two ads. But Albert was later able to use the same invention for something completely different. Ergo, the coffee cup holder. Um, so uh, he used the same invention, innovation for his packaging. So he, uh, he was actually uh, able to do what I called, and you can see, check out one of my earlier videos, uh, my technology transfer video. Uh, that where you took something that was used in one industry and applied it completely different for a completely new use somewhere else. So think about this. Patent, uh, the patent was, was not, by the way, limited to vials and bottles when he made them uh, out of, into boxes, but uh, he, limited, he, he didn't limit them for any material. And I think that's good, too, because, you know, they also make, in, in addition to corrugated paper now, there's this thing called corrugated plastic. I got another video on that too, by the way, which is, is pretty cool because I think those are that's some of the, the, the best um, uh, prototyping material you can use in certain instances is this corrugated plastic if you, can, if you know how to work it right. Uh, so, uh, developing a new technology is one thing, but making it manufacturable is completely another. And what I'm talking about here is where the one guy filed the patent for, ooh, I've, I figured out how to, how to make this stuff, uh, I, uh, how to make cardboard, the, the same, same stuff that we're using for hats, and I've made them into boxes. Now, was he able to market that well? I don't really know. I, I, I really didn't see a thing on that. But I did see where the guy doing the bag thing uh, that was manufacturing the bags, he was the one that took off with it because he was able to mass produce it. 
So when you're coming up with an invention, you're coming up with an idea, always make sure that you are able, this is manufacturable. You've got to be able to manufacture it and you've got to be able to manufacture it in large quantities if you're going to sell large quantities of this product. Um, another thing, a small market niche uh, that fits, that can sustain you, can always lead you to a bigger market fit later. And, and what I'm talking about here is Gare. He was originally selling these cardboard boxes. He was able to mass produce them. He was probably doing okay, but he really got the big break with, the brisk, the, with Nabisco where he was selling tons and tons of these things and probably was responsible for, oh, well, if they use them for crackers, let's use them for this, let's use them for this, let's use them for this other thing over here. And now, as we know, cardboard boxes are everywhere. So, if you're looking for more information about making your product the right one, making, making sure you're doing a prototype right, then you want to check out a video. We've got a, uh, a, a, actually a course on empoweredinventing.com called Building a Prototype on a Budget. Uh, we really walk you through that and we don't want you to spend tons of money needlessly in the wrong direction and we really teach you the right wisdom and the right skills for, for doing this correctly. So anyway, check that out. It's on empoweredinventing.com. Again, I'm Don Skaggs. This is Empowered Inventing TV. And like, subscribe, share this with others you think you know, that might, this might be helpful for. And I will look to see you at the next meeting, workshop, maybe one of our online classes, or on the next video.